Welcome everyone to Vote Yes for Gillette College Facebook Live. I'm Dr. Olin Odikoven, President and CEO of Peregrine Global Services here in Gillette. And once again, I have the pleasure of being joined by Dr. Mark Engler, former Vice President of Gillette College. And we're here tonight to talk a little bit more about Gillette College. What does it mean? What does it do uh, for all of us? I mean, we often think about uh, the college and the various activities, but when you really break it out, the college is a, has so much to offer. Last week uh, on our uh, Facebook Live event, we talked a little bit about how uh, the different areas, the different economic sectors of Campbell County uh, uh, are engaged or otherwise involved with Gillette College. And tonight we're gonna look at it from the college's perspective, what all it does for our community. And most importantly, what does it mean if the college were independent? How could these various services and programs and certificates and activities actually improve or increase through a vote uh, for independence? So that's what we'll be talking about tonight. So let's get started. Um, Cassie, I can have the first slide. Thank you. So when you uh, look at um, the, um, all the different activities that comprise Gillette College, you, you have, of course, the, the main campus, the old main there. You've got the, the new Pronghorn Center, the nursing uh, buildings, the, the dormitories, Area 59. There's the rodeo. Uh, there's the welding and technology center, electrical center. There's a lot of happening at Gillette College. And back in the day, it's hard to believe, almost over 50 years ago, this small building that started out and today is just so monumental. So let, let's, let's walk through a few of these and talk about some of the various programs uh, that we have at Gillette College. Well, first of all, we've got a lot of degree programs. Uh, an Associate of Science, Associate of Arts, Associate of Applied Sciences, Associate Degree in Nursing. So, so Mark, let's walk through each one of these. What, what are some examples of the degrees that come out of here, some specific concentrations? Sure, uh, uh, Olin, when, we, when you look at the degrees that uh, institutions offer, uh, first and foremost, the Associate of Science, the Associate of Arts, and the, associ uh, the Associate of uh, Nursing can all be transfer-oriented. So those would be uh, programs such as education, chemistry, business, mm -hmm. uh, nursing, as I've said, where students may have a desire to go on and earn a bachelor's degree at a, at a transfer institution, or maybe some, someday here in Gillette, it depends on what the partnerships look like. Um, but also in those associate uh, degrees, we see more and more students earning an associate of science or associate of arts and staying and working. Mm -hmm. So that they're, they're now much more uh, uh, accessible for students and then uh, applicable to them in their mm -hmm. world of work, which is really one of the things that we want to see. The Associate of Applied Science is most of the tech programs that we have, welding, diesel mechanics, industrial electricity, and so forth. Uh, those are typically terminal degrees mm -hmm. where the student will go uh, earn their Associate of Applied Science and then uh, enter into the world of work in that chosen trade or that chosen field. We also now, the, the state legislature uh, recently passed uh, the um, Bachelor of Applied Science or, or allowed community college to mm -hmm. offer the Bachelor of Applied Science, which is becomes management track, quite honestly. So if you're uh, getting a degree in Applied Science field and, uh, and maybe you've gone into the world of work for 10 or 15 mm -hmm. years and uh, aspire to become a, a leader mm -hmm. in the organization, you might pursue that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, so, so just to recap, so the Associate of Science, Associate of Arts, often uh, students take those in anticipation of maybe completing a four-year degree elsewhere, but they can stop at that point, be a part of the workforce, and then maybe uh, finish the bachelor's degree later online or whatever that might look like. Right. But that Associates of Applied Science degree, uh, really a technology-based technology degree, whether it be welding, electrical, or whatever. But I'm real excited about someday thinking about uh, July College offering the, the four-year Applied Science degree. Uh, I see many in our community could take advantage of that, get their complete their bachelor's degree, 
And like you said, it's a management degree, so you you know it allows you to move up as a as a leader, supervisor, et cetera, in in the workplace. Exactly. I, I think there's all kinds of uh, opportunity uh, there for students who maybe earned their degree with this 25 years ago and may want to come back. It's mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that that we find in in community colleges too. It, it may not be as true today as it was, say, 10 years ago, but the largest segment of returning students to community colleges were baccalaureate earners. Mm -hmm. So they'd earned a bachelor's degree that really didn't get them into the world of work that they wanted. So they come back to community college, find one of the mm -hmm. associate degrees that makes more sense for them. Mm -hmm. The uh, associate degree in nursing, uh, this is, that, that is also a, a terminal degree. They go right into the workforce. They get their, what is the license they get when they get that associate degree? So they get the, the uh, <laughs> you have the LPN or, or the uh, registered RN. Okay. Um, it, it is also a segue into the, uh, the Bachelor of Nursing mm -hmm. Science, which is becoming more and more popular. But the, by and large, our students, uh, the ones who apply to our program and the hundred who are on the wait list that don't ever mm -hmm. get in because we can't expand, uh, enter the world of work here locally and primarily with the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I was talking with the personnel from the hospital last week and they were telling me that we've got to expand the program because mm -hmm. we have unmet need uh, in, in our em employment opportunities and uh, this is the avenue that they choose to work with the college to take our graduates and mm -hmm. give them work. Well, it's a great segue into the notion of what does it mean to vote yes for independence. Because right now, these degree programs are largely determined by the, the trustees in the program and shared. And Gillette asks for things, but it's really the decision process is the approval authority rests in shared. With independence, then the approval authority will be here in Gillette, more responsive to the local needs, like you said, the hospital saying, hey, we need you to expand. Uh, much more likely to do that under an independent scenario than it would be under the umbrella of the, the larger district. That's correct, and, and it's, uh, it's uh, two things go hand in hand there. Uh, your independence, so you have local decision making, you have local academic leadership, uh, all mm -hmm. the way up to the board of trustees who make the final decision on your program mix, the introduction of new programs, and then also your creditor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your creditor looks at your program mix as well and says, mm -hmm. Uh, does that really satisfy your local need? And they're mm -hmm. going to look at that closely when we go through the accreditation process. What can you do programmatically that is really going to satisfy local demand, local need, and even prepare others for the future? Yeah, yeah. I, I know in our work with colleges and universities around the world, uh, when they talk about, well, what, what do we offer that the accreditors want? No, it's the other way around. Creditors make sure you're offering what the right. community wants. Right. <laughs> they don't really care which programs you want. They want to make sure you're addressing the needs of the community, right. particularly community colleges, which have that magic word community. Yeah, that right. makes a lot of sense. You know, one other thing, Owen, as we move on to the next slide, too, that in, in many of the associate degrees that we offer, there's also a certificate track. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see more and more students taking advantage of that. And, and generally what happens in, in a certificate pathway is students take the, the content but don't take the general education, the math, mm -hmm. the writing, and those types of things because they've already determined that they're not necessarily going to go, going mm -hmm. to go on and get a bachelor's degree. Uh, and we've seen a lot of growth in certificate programs in recent years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, all of us, uh, you know, are aware that, you know, will the degree itself, you know, 10, 20, 30 years from now, it's more important about the credentialing, what you learn, as opposed to necessarily the degrees. Right. So this fits right in with that, that the college can offer both degree track as well as certificate track and still meet those workforce development needs. Right. Um, MSHA program, I, I know I, I had a meeting at the college here a couple of weeks ago and walked into the tech center and there seemed like a thousand people crammed in there. It was like, what the heck's going on? And then I looked around and met, and I said, oh, I'm in the wrong, actually, it turned out I was in the wrong building for my meeting, but no, we've got the MSHA training going on. And uh, I, I, I saw this statistic there, nearly 4,000 learners last year went through the MSHA program. Uh, which is phenomenal, and and if you can see that picture on there, it almost looks like it's upside down. But because you think, wait a minute, is the sky blue here? But no, that is an image uh, from the new simulation uh, center that has been added to the MSHA training, which is 
amazing piece of technology. Yeah, it is, and, and they, they brought the uh, simulation center on uh, after uh, I retired, but I knew that they were, it was in mm -hmm. the development stages. But M. Shaw, and, and we, I don't think we, we mentioned it last week in our, in our work with uh, industry, but M. Shaw is one of the biggest, biggest programs we have to support the mining industry, mm -hmm. uh, and, and a lot of it, the industrial. Uh, industries that are exist out there, and we've we've had the statewide MSHA grant, federal grant that comes through us uh, for many many years, and administered mm -hmm. out of Gillette College. But uh, that that serves a lot of people and has been very successful. We've got exceptional staff uh, there as well, and again, that is a it's it it can be a utility for uh, the existing workforce to get the MSHA training, or it can be a, a catalyst that might generate some interest in other programs because mm -hmm. they, they, they're on the college campus, they get to network a little bit, they understand some of the other programs, mm -hmm. but it, it is a, uh, it's been a great program for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, MSHA, the mine, what's that stand for? Mine Safety Health Administration. Health Administration. Yeah. It's the safety program. It's, I know it's a requirement uh, for the mines that all employees have to have. Periodically they have to have the initial and then the re recertification yeah. periodically, so uh, nearly 4,000 learners last year, just a phenomenal number, but then you add up all the employees that work in the, the industrial sector of Campbell County, it seems about right. Plus, we're probably also drawn from the region uh, for that we because uh, yeah. of the size and scope there. Which is, a, and that's another good example of a program that has some credit attached to it and some non-credit. So, mm -hmm. you know, one of the first level courses in the MSHA program is a credit-bearing class. Uh, mm -hmm. Students would sign up or the, the business would pay the uh, tuition of the attendees. But there are others that are non-credit. So, it, you know, it's the whole continuing ed education side that we've talked about before that, that uh, keep uh, lifelong learning, if mm -hmm. you will, keep students engaged. Well, the, uh, these next couple of slides are going to talk about some, uh, to me, there was fascinating areas. I didn't even realize Gillette College was doing this until I started doing my research in preparation for tonight's Facebook Live session. But we have the Adult Basic Education, or the, uh, the high set, and I think that's actually two different programs, but, but basically they prepare uh, students who need to, uh, who didn't finish high school for some right. reason or another. Right. This allows them to get then that high school equivalency degree. Right. It's, uh, I just, um, again, having been affiliated with the college and watching students go through the adult ba basic education program with us, uh, and, and uh, first of all, watch them participate in the commencement exercises with us. Oh, okay. It's just, uh, it's just amazing. And then, in the next fall, watch them taking college level courses with us because mm -hmm. it start, they start to write their story. Right. Um, and it's just, it's real, it's a real success. It's, it's a program that, um, uh, you know, doesn't generate a lot of revenue for us, but it supports a lot of need. It supports the a lot of value add students. to the community. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, so many people I can imagine uh, that, you know, for, for a variety of reasons, didn't have that opportunity to finish right. high school in the first place. And then to think they're going to go on and maybe take a few college classes right. beyond that. Uh, truly amazing opportunity for yeah, folks. it's a great program. Which ties right in with the testing center. Uh, I understand that uh, Gillette College, uh, not just the students enrolled at, test, uh, at Gillette College, but it provides kind of as a regional training, te or excuse me, testing center for, because uh, many industries require specific tests to uh, comp exactly. whatever to for employment, so they can do that at Gillette College. Yeah, the uh, the testing center again has been a valuable asset for us. It's one that, uh, again, by not being able to make our own decisions, has uh, had the rug pulled out from underneath mm -hmm. it a little bit. But it is, it's industry standards usually have some industry exams. So students will, will go, to the, go to school, earn their um, degree with this, and then still have to take mm -hmm. an industry standard test. And they come to the testing center to do that, uh, rather than have to drive to Rapid City, mm -hmm. for example. So, that service pro provided to uh, business and industry is really important. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, uh, the utilization of the testing center is uh, a lot of the times not even our students. Mm -hmm. There are people who've entered the world of work, need to license in Wyoming mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be, and they're going to come take advantage of the testing center. Another good example of that industry uh, college partnership sure. where the college is helping serve a need uh, for workforce development yeah. in industry. Uh, through the resources it offers. 
Uh, and then we have the dual and concurrent enrollment programs. This is an opportunity uh, for high school students who want to take college credit uh, while they're in high school. <coughs> the, uh, so to, to brag on Gillette College a little bit, I think Gillette College was the first college in the state of Wyoming to have a high school age student earn their associate degree and high school diploma at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and now we've we've had many many of those, and because we were the trendsetters, you see other community colleges across the state doing the same thing. But a concurrent enrollment uh, student is is really when we partner with the school district, uh, the student takes an English a college level English class on the high school campus, mm -hmm. u utilizing the high school faculty, uh, which is a great. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, partnership because we we add to our uh, adjunct pool mm -hmm. uh, and students are earning college level courses college level credit excuse me that we assess so we understand that yes they are learning at the same at the level that we would expect a college level student mm -hmm. to learn the dual enrollment courses are uh, when the student actually comes on our campus okay. uh, and so they get uh, release time from the high school or whatever it may be come to the campus uh, and take classes there. One of the reasons that uh, Gillette College worked so hard with the school district uh, and, and really in strong partnership to build Westwood High School yeah. on our campus because those students can walk across to the tech center or the main building and be enrolled in college level work right away. Mm -hmm. and, th and that somewhat related I guess is the Pronghorn Advantage program that is uh, funded in part through uh, BOCES uh, but it's that dual enrollment that, like you said, uh, the, every spring usually we see a, a few students uh, who graduate from high school with an associate degree right. coming, coming yeah. right out of the gate. The, uh, the, the Pronghorn Advantage program is a, really a, a forward-thinking scholarship program that affords students who qualify, uh, who have taken an ACT and have reached mm -hmm. a certain plateau or a certain score, to take college-level work. So they, they could end up taking six, eight, ten credit hours mm -hmm. at the college on scholarship through the Pronghorn Advantage. Um, and ultimately what we're trying to do is uh, make sure that the students have a quality educational experience uh, that's affordable so that mm -hmm. you're not building these huge amounts of debt. Oh. Uh, and, and, and we know that's just a big issue across yeah. the country. Yeah, the, the debt burden, and we all hear those stories, and the yeah. worst, we've probably got relations yes. uh, and friends who have those horror stories, but certainly one of the advantages of Gillette College is it's much, even if you're paying full without the scholarship, uh, it's much, much cheaper than going almost anywhere else. And affordable. with the Pronghorn Advantage program and the scholarships, where they can get it up towards an associate degree and be debt free at the same time, what a great opportunity. Yeah. And, I can, uh, and I can only believe that through the vote with independence, that it gives us more flexibility to diversify those programs to engage more Campbell County students in this process of pursuing their education and having that control, that local control that really feeds that, hence the vote yes for Gillette College because yeah. it just makes these programs better. Yeah, and you, you, you hit, a, hit the nail on the head, Olin, because it, it is, uh, the, the vote yes for Gillette College um, is about independence, but it's about the ability to make our own decisions and get creative mm -hmm. about how we craft programs that satisfy a local need. Mm -hmm. So how are we serving our local high school students? How are we ser serving the young adults? How are we serving the single parents? Mm -hmm. You know, how are we making sure that we're equipping uh, work-ready individuals for local industries? Mm -hmm. And those are the, those, that's the most important thing about this whole effort is that we have to make the decisions locally. Exactly. Because we understand what the needs are. Right. And our needs are different than church. Sure. Uh, we're different yeah. communities and such. Um, the, another one that uh, near and dear to my heart is, uh, I'm not advancing there, there we go, is Area 59, uh, where community members can imagine a project, design it, a product, design it, create it, and ultimately produce it. And if you haven't been down to Area 59, uh, it, is, it is a phenomenal place, and we are so blessed to have received the grant and the, and, the, and the partnership with the college to really make this work and the entrepreneurs that are developing out of this and we're already starting to see some of the results here where some budding entrepreneurs are designing very innovative things that yeah. are going out and being sold across yeah. the planet. I, I, I'm so uh, proud 
of Area 59, and you know it's it's taken a while to gain momentum, but mm -hmm. it's really taking off right now, and it's a, a it's a great example of what uh, private philanthropy, uh, uh, economic development grants, and some some individuals locally who have this this really good idea mm -hmm. of what they can accomplish when they put their minds and resources together, and and uh, we've said it before that. Yeah, anything we can do to create an environment where we can diversify an economy, create new opportunities mm -hmm. for us, we ought to do that. And Area, area 59 is, is uh, you know, it's the grandest scale of a think tank, mm -hmm. uh, honestly, where you take that think and you apply it w with uh, new technologies that exist. So one of the first things that we did um, before I left with Area 59 was partner with the business program mm -hmm. because it made absolute sense yeah. you take you take business, you take young aspiring entrepreneurs, uh, and then you you uh, put them in a in a high tech environment, and all of a sudden they're getting very creative mm -hmm. about oh my gosh I could I could build a career out of this, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's coming to fruition, and we all know. Uh, small business drives the world. Oh, absolutely. Small business drives the world, and this is the uh, this is the utility of the Area 59. And a, and a plug I was reading on Area 59, when I was reading about this, I did not know this, but veterans, if you're a veteran, you get in free. Right. Uh, so anybody who's a military veteran like me can go down there and use these uh, uh, facilities and the technology there, and it doesn't cost me a nickel to yeah. go down. Uh, so. If you're a veteran out there and you haven't been down there, it is available for you and there's no cost associated with it. Um, and then we have the Verizon Innovation Camp. This was one of those that I also didn't know about until I was doing my research here. Gillette College is one of only 19 Verizon Innovation Camp sites in the entire nation. And so last month in June, uh, hosted 91 uh, elementary, early middle school students for a three week and it's really STEM-based, as I understand, right. science, technology, uh, and math-based uh, programs. And uh, we always think of colleges. We think of, you know, older adults here. But uh, for the for the kids to to introduce them to opportunities that they otherwise wouldn't get. Yeah. So the Verizon Innovation Camp uh, is is new to me as well. Uh, but you go back to the Area 59 conversation, mm -hmm. which was really STEM related and the things that we were trying to do there. We've taken the E from STEM a little bit and, and have tried to do some things around engineering and enge engineering tech, which we think there there's mm -hmm. going to be a, a numerous jobs mm -hmm. uh, in the future. Uh, I did have the opportunity to talk to a young uh, girl who had just finished her time at the Verizon Innovation Camp. And she was excited. Oh, uh, yeah. she was. She had a great time. She was excited about the opportunity and the things that they did. And and uh, you know, I think that uh, what that does, it will inspire her to work harder in math, work harder in the mm -hmm. sciences uh, mm -hmm. as she goes through school. So, yeah. great opportunities. There's just so many opportunities uh, at Gillette College uh, today. And to think about what the opportunities could look like in the future. If we all get out and vote, we vote yes. Uh, early voting's going on right now. Uh, you can go down to the courthouse uh, any business day and cast your vote. The V day is August 17th, but that's uh, what almost three, almost four weeks away. Right. Plenty of time to get down and vote now uh, and vote yes for Gillette College because when you think about what we offer today, under the umbrella that we have. Once that umbrella is lifted and we're able to control our own destiny, better partner with our community, better partner with the community, we, the, the possibilities of where this could go is just unbelievable. The possibilities are endless. I, and I'm reminded uh, of a book I know you, you, you know too, is Good to Great. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, and, and we have an opportunity to, to take what I think is a, a very good college mm -hmm. and make it great. Mm -hmm. um, because we, we make it Campbell County's college, right. and that's only done. I, I told somebody the other day, I said, you know, we've got a $90 million infrastructure with all the support of the community and private donors, uh, but we can't call it our college yet. Know, yeah. It's uh, until we can make our own decisions and have our own board of trustees and really serve uh, our, our constituents mm -hmm. well, we will not have our college. Mm -hmm. Well, every vote matters. Early voting has already started. Uh, please get out and vote. Uh, vote. Vote today. Vote tomorrow. And and if, for <coughs> and if you don't have a chance to vote early, certainly get out and vote on August seventeenth. 
If you want to learn more, uh, VoteYesForGilletteCollege.com is a great resource for you. Uh, this website was built by uh, members of our community, felt very strongly about it, Independent Gillette College. There's a lot of Q&A on there, that site. If you want to be involved in the, the movement for Gillette College, you can sign up for opportunities to uh, participate in this process. You can email Mark. You see email his email me. address there, mark at voteyesforgillettecollege.com if you got questions. Uh, we're on Twitter and on Facebook, of course. Uh, which is where we're at right now. Uh, but if you want to learn more, just ask. There's lots of resources out there for you. We'd love to hear from you. And um, it, it, Cassie, if we had any questions, speaking of questions and comments or anything, nothing so far. So, uh, but this will be rebroadcast. Uh, but definitely, if you uh, have that opportunity to, to vote yes for Gillette College as soon as you can, and certainly by August 17th. Well, Mark, another uh, Facebook Live event. We have another one in two weeks on uh, August 4th uh, that we'll be talking more about Gillette College and its role in our community and some of the economics around Gillette College and, and such. And so look forward to that evening. But please, get out and vote. Vote yes. Thanks, Owen. Thank you.